Hi guys, this is TJ from Impact Gamers and today I'm just going to be showing you guys how to create a platform game in ClickTeam Fusion 2.5. Um, this is partly due to the fact that the coronavirus has made it so you know, schools are closing so we're just making some resources available for people to do this kind of stuff at home. So I'm not going to be showing you the ins and outs in terms of creating a title screen um, and a UI and uh, an end screen all that kind of stuff today today is just going to be showing you the groundworks to making a platform game so this will be what is essential for the game the rest of it is things will we can show in different videos um, so this is just specifically for platform so let's get into it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new frame and a frame is a level in click team so we're going to go right into that and the first thing we're going to want to do is insert a new object and the new object is going to be an active and this is going to become our playable character so all we're going to do first is rename it player just so we're not getting like mixed up for it or p1 for player one and then we're going to go to its movement options and its, its properties and we're going to say platform what this now does is it enables gravity um, in the game. It is now, it's not using a physics engine, but it will make the character just drop down. So if I run the frame and I'm going to drag it up because otherwise we won't see it and it just falls off the screen. So that's one of the things it does by default. So we're going to have to stop that. We're going to have to make a platform for our character to walk on. So to do that, we just go to backgrounds, add a backdrop place that in the level and uh, I'm gonna be super lazy with mine and I'm just gonna color in one color there you go and then expand it a little bit but at this moment in time the computer in the game will not register that as a platform it does not know what it's meant to do so the first step is to click it go to its properties and in obstacle type we want to change that into a platform at this point it still doesn't know what to do with a platform so we have to go into the event editor and say new condition when our character collides with a backdrop we want our character to stop and that's it our character now will land on top of it it now also we can see the other things that um, platform movement enables it lets us move left and right it also if we press the shift button by default it lets you jump to change these settings at any point, if you really want to, go to your runtime settings of your application itself, and right at the bottom there is controls. And if you click the X on, and there you are, it lets you sort out your buttons and like your key bindings for your controls. So now that we have platforms and we can jump, there will be some parts of the level which I had to get to. So for them, we will need to add. A ladder and again I'm gonna be incredibly lazy and there we go I'm just gonna add this and I'm gonna stretch it a little bit by just clicking on it again and now what happens is our character can actually walk up to a ladder and oh so that my pixel is not actually connecting but if I jump onto the ladder it does absolutely nothing and that's because we've not told it to so now that we've highlighted it and said computer, this is now a ladder. Now what happens is it allows me to go up and down the ladder. So there we go. So we've always got to tell the computer exactly what an item is. So now that we've made these, we can just drag more in. But first, it's always really helpful to rename all your objects just so we know what they are. So we know what they all are and we can just drag more in and start crafting a level the only problem is this level is incredibly small so this is a screen size so the white box is the level but these black lines represent the actual screen and the resolution of the screen that we're going to be playing um, in so we're going to change the screen um, the, the actual frame the level size that's what we're going to be changing and to do that, you click on frame, go to its properties, and in size, I'm just going to change that 640 to 2000. 
then change the width so there we go 2000 pixels there so it's a bit bigger so at the moment we have a player platform and ladders we have nothing else in the game and we have no destination we have no collectibles we have no bad guys they're the things I'm going to be showing you in this video and they're the basics uh, anything else are the kind of things you can you can um, you know, improve artwork and sound effects and all that kind of stuff in your own time but I'm just going to be showing you the very basics today so now that we've made them super quick I'm going to throw in a quick backdrop and again this is artwork but it's a very quick way of doing it and I'm going to throw that in and I'm just going to stretch it to the screen size and there we go but the problem is because the others are actually Last as a backdrop we have to make sure we tell it to go right to the back or we could do it as a separate layer if we really wanted to but today I'm just going to be doing it all in the same frame I'm gonna now change it from solid color to a motif and I'm just gonna say that I want it to be a blue color and I'm gonna add a few speckles inside it as well and this just helps when it comes to when you're moving in the level probably not the best color choice actually I will change that very slightly there we go Better. the white dots are there just to help represent movement so when you get to a point you'll be able to see you moving better um, so anyway what we need to do now is add collectibles and bad guys so I'm going to start by really quickly just throwing in two new active objects and then renaming them so we've got bad and we've got coin so they're the things that I'm going to be collecting, bad guys are things I'm going to be avoiding. Um, again, going to be incredibly quick when it comes to artwork. Um, instead of just like importing them, we're just going to really quickly throw in our own little version of a coin. And obviously you guys will be able to spend so much more time making your coins than I am. There we go. So we've got a coin and then the bad guy can literally be anything. Um, but So in terms of bad guys though we do try and stick to certain colours um, to represent that it is in fact a bad guy. So, so mine's going to be super quick drawn and I'm going to give my frowny face just so everyone knows that it's a bad guy very appalling I know but that's not the important stuff right now artwork leave till later on so now that we've got bad guys they don't do anything in the game and that's the problem and coins currently don't do anything either so if I just add a little bit more to this level it doesn't even matter at this point if it's super neat or anything like that and I'm just gonna drag a few more things over like so and I'm gonna say I want a few coins to be here at the beginning and uh, if I hold control down over it and click I can actually just duplicate it really quick this way and it's the same object so if I code one of these coins it will code all of them so and that's become using I'm either dragging from here or I'm using control perfect but now we've got a bad guy and the bad guy needs to do something so the bad guy hasn't got any movement and currently isn't very bad because we can walk into him and do anything it doesn't actually affect us so I'm gonna set him on a path movement and this little guy is gonna go up and down because I want that to be the path movement this character has to kind of go by in order to get past so when he rises that's it I can go past I'm also gonna make sure I click over and drag over both nodes so both are flashing and then click these two to loop and reverse at the end and reduce the speed to around 17. This will now make it so it will continuously go up and down, reach its point and restart over and it will keep doing this now. So that's what I want. But at this point there are no rules for the coins or for the bad guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to make it a little bit interesting now. We're going to go to our event editor again. New condition, but this time we're going to say when we collide with a bad guy. 
we want our character to so we can do it a few ways here we can reduce lives uh, we can destroy instantly we can send back to the beginning we, we, we can do all sorts I'm personally gonna remove one life every time I hit a bad guy and then set a rule saying if all my lives reach zero at this point my character then will have to go back to the beginning so we're gonna restart the current frame this will keep my score and my lives as they were but the problem with that is we have no lives now so we also at the same time need to go to lives set number of lives back to three so you can loop around it means if I bump into three enemies I die I go back to the beginning but I keep my score but you can say you will minus some score as well so you can say subscribed uh, subscribed subtract five points if this happens you gain your lives back but you have to start the level again there's loads of ways to do it I'm just doing this so that it's, it's playable and that it still has a consequence but you can make it as difficult or as easy as you like I'm just trying to find a middle ground so we've got a rule and this will make it so we can keep playing at this point though once you reach I think you could just restart the whole thing and it would restart the lives and score for you but I'm doing it manually so we've got this but we don't have a way of gaining score at the moment so we're gonna fix that we're gonna say collisions with our character and another object being the coin we're gonna destroy the coin otherwise you could exploit the game and just keep walking over the same coin continuously and we don't want that but this is where we gain our score so we're going to add score and we'll add five per coin there we go so we have coins we have bad guys but we have no way of progressing to another part of the game so that's where we're going to make ourselves a, an end goal and the end goal can be it can be anything really but i'm just going to make it I don't know actually where we're going with this, but there we go. Some kind of gateway. And I'm going to say we're going to put it towards the end of the level this time. And because it's at the end, we know that's at the furthest point. So I'm going to really quickly start making the rest of my level and send it over to here. And I'm really quickly going to make this path because I don't want to make it a really long tutorial and half it be me testing the game. So if I make the platforms go right the way to the end just so we can test a good few portions of the game. There we go. And you can always just say I'm going to add a few more bad guys. So I'm going to put them in the bottom because we know the path movement for these guys starts by going upwards. So we're going to put them along the way and drag a few more coins in and this is just so we can test everything as we're going we're then going to add the rule when our player collides with this object we don't have any other frames currently but we know at some point we're going to add them so I'm going to add the rule in jump to next frame oh not jump to frame next frame there we go so if we run our application it should just close the window at this point because there is no next frame so if we go here to run application i'm going to use these ladders i'm going to collect the coins go up and as you can see at the moment we hit three problems in this amount of space so game testing is always really important so we know the ladders work the platforms work and collecting coins and the bad guy moves there are three problems currently we don't have any way to check how much lives we have so we're going to add a lives object and we're going to add it to the top left you can put it wherever you want but top left is good because if we add a score we put it to our top right because the way the digits are added actually can uh, make the digits go off the screen if you put it on your left so we're going to put it to the top right the only other problem we've got is currently the camera does not follow our character to the extra portions of the level so we're gonna say always and then we're gonna go into our storyboard edit and go to scrollings 
center window position in the frame and we want to make it relative to our character press ok and this basically is your camera this is now going to make it so it follows our character wherever they go so now if we run the application we go up the ladders collect some coins avoid the bad guys we will have to test if we do in fact die as well at some point and we just want to avoid these go to the goal the game ends that's completely fine the only other thing we need to test is the lives so it says once here's twice it's three times since it's back to the beginning gives us our health back but it has minus five points so we can keep playing the game but you're not going to have a high score because you've died so that's the penalty so these are all the basics of making your platform game these are the non-essential parts of making your platform game so that is it for now guys that is the very basics of making a platform game in click team fusion there are so much more things you can do than this this is just the bare minimum this is just your bad guys um, a collectible player movement and an end goal so this just makes it so you have a way of winning the game and you have a way of losing or restarting um, so yeah you've, you've got a, a penalty and, and that's it obviously work on things like sound start screens end screens all that kind of stuff artwork sounds to do with um, even player interaction on menus everything like that is stuff you can convert to in your own time but that is it for now and as always guys see you in the next video bye